Okay, welcome to Candid Conversation number 343. We're starting a chapter now on uh, last things, it's called. Answering questions on last things. The first question is, when is Jesus Christ coming again? Uh, first thing we should note, and this is what most people don't understand, is that um, there are two comings. Because people don't rightly divide the word of truth, what most of churchianity will do is they think that they think that Jesus is they get the rapture and Jesus second coming confused they think that Jesus is that they'll tell you like Matthew 24 uh, then shall two be in the field one should be taking the other left two in a bed one should be taking the other left two grinding in a meal one should be taking the other left and they say oh well that's where uh, Jesus comes and he raptures up the people but when you look in the book of Luke when it mentions this same thing it says well where are they gonna be taken Lord and he says well where the Eagles gather that's where they'll be taken and so and the Eagles from Revelation 19 it tells you that the birds are gathered to uh, to destroy those who are against God so the taken, the people who are taken there are the ones taken, they're taken in judgment, not raptured up. But they confuse that passage with 1 Thessalonians 4, which says, We will meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And so most people, if you refer to, when you talk about the rapture, most people just refer to that as Jesus coming back to take us home to be with him. They combine the two events. Churchianity will believe that we're supposed to go to heaven and have eternal life in heaven, which is true, that's a good belief. But they mix it with the second coming, which is where, that's where Jesus Christ comes at the end of the tribulation period to destroy the Antichrist and his forces and then bring believing Israel into the kingdom. Because they don't recognize there are two different programs, Israel's program in which Israel is reconciled back to God at the end of the tribulation period at the second coming, and the heavenly program where the church, the body of Christ, is raptured up to be with the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord, and we have eternity in heaven. They combine the two programs. They don't recognize God has a kingdom on earth with Israel and a kingdom in heaven with us, the body of Christ. And so they combine the terms thinking the rapture and Jesus' second coming are both the same thing. And because they don't want to dwell on the judgment part, which is what the second coming is, they say, well, Jesus is coming back, second coming, and he's coming back to take us home, rapture. So when the question is asked in the book, when is Jesus Christ coming again? Recognize that he's coming twice. 1 Thessalonians 4, with the rapture of the church, where he reconciles the heavenly places back to himself, that says that the, both the dead, the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together in the clouds with him to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So with the rapture, Jesus Christ doesn't really come to the earth. He comes into the clouds. We meet him in the clouds in the air. Then after that takes place, Israel's program resumes. There is a seven-year covenant that the Antichrist makes with the nation of Israel. At the end of those seven years, Jesus Christ comes back. The book of Zechariah says, that he shall stand, his feet shall stand upon the Mount of Olives. So at Jesus' second coming, you have, for Israel, it's one of judgment. So he comes, stands upon the Mount of Olives 
fights against his enemies, which is the Antichrist and his forces, destroys them, then he gathers up believing Israel and brings them into the kingdom. Now, Jesus' second coming is a reference to Israel's program. The rapture is a reference to the church, the body of Christ. So what I'll do is I'll try to answer both, both when the question is, when is Jesus coming again? For the rapture, it's when the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. There are thrones, principalities, powers, dominions, mights, every name that is named. They're in heavenly places. And Satan and his angels, according to Revelation 12, one third of the angels rebelled with Satan. Those, uh, so halfway, or um, at, the, at the rapture then, the body of Christ is raptured up and that takes place when there are, first the quantity, enough people to take over in heavenly places because Satan and his forces, Revelation 12 mentions that halfway through the tribulation period, Michael and his angels will fight with the devil and his angels and the devil and his angels are cast out. Neither is their place found anymore in heaven. They are cast out to the earth. God cannot do that until he's got both the number of people to replace those angels and enough qualified people. It's just like if you had a, you know, an organization, let's say Walt Disney Company, and there were people in that company that were not going by the policy. A third of the people were not going by the policy. Well, you need to get rid of those people because they rebel. They won't go by what your policies are. They've got their own plan and they're working for their own selves, not for the company. So you got to get rid of those people, but you've got to replace them with people who are qualified to do those positions or else the company isn't going to run. If you don't have you know, those positions, the company suffers. That's what you can see when it comes to the uh, heavenly places. Satan and his angels are in those places. Job 15 says, the heavens are unclean in his sight. So Satan and his angels are in those places, in heavenly places, and they will remain there until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Meaning that Christ has the people, if there are, say, 10 million angels that rebelled, well then, he's, then Christ needs 10 million saved people in the dispensation of grace. Now if a million of them are really high ranking, not only does Christ need 10 million, but he also needs a million of those to have enough sound doctrine built up in the inner man to be qualified to operate in those higher positions. So when the rapture takes place is when Christ has both the quantity and the quality of members of the body of Christ to be in heavenly places. That's why the reason I do these videos and the reason I spend so much time on sound doctrine is because that's where the battle is. 2 Timothy 3, 13 says, Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. The first couple of verses say that in the last days perilous times shall come. The battle that Satan has isn't really over people getting saved. I mean, he, yes, certainly he doesn't want people getting saved. But if he can keep Christians weak, if all they ever learn is the gospel, then the rapture is never going to take place because Christ won't have people who are qualified to take thrones, principalities, powers, dominions, and mights. All he'll have is every name that is named. And so the battleground really t today and reason that perilous times come is over you. Satan doesn't want you coming into the knowledge of the truth. The more sound doctrine you get built up in the inner man, the more qualified you are for those higher positions. In the book of Daniel, Daniel prays and is in mourning and fasting for 21 days because he doesn't understand the vision given to him. Gabriel comes 
And he says, from the day that you prayed, from day one, I was sent to come to you to give you the answer to this vision. He says, but the Prince of Persia held me up and I had to wait for Michael to come and help me. 21 days. And he says, it took 21 days before Michael could come. Why is that? Because he says, none holdeth with me in these matters except for Michael. So what it tells you is that although one third, only a third of the angels left with Satan, a lot of those angels that left were high-ranking angels because only Gabriel, Gabriel says, I've only got Michael to stand with me in this. That's why the only angels named in your Bible are Gabriel and Michael. Well, there's also a bad in the book of Revelation. But um, you don't see anybody else mentioned because Gabriel and Michael appear to be the only high-ranking angels that stayed with God when Satan rebelled. So Jesus Christ is in need of high-ranking people who can take thrones and principalities. He doesn't need people at every name that is named. He needs people qualified for those high-ranking positions. And so if evil men and seducers wax worse and worse, 2 Timothy 3.13, and Satan is able to keep the body of Christ from getting qualified for those higher ranking positions, the result is that Satan wins, that the rapture doesn't take place. But of course the good news is in verses 16 and 17 of 2 Timothy 3, it says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine and proof for correction for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So even though evil men and seducers wax worse and worse, the good news is that the good news is that God has given us his perfect word, which will, if we allow it to, thoroughly equip us unto all good works, meaning that in spite of Satan's continued and his worse attack against the body of Christ as the last days come upon us, Satan is still powerless to keep us from occupying those higher positions in heavenly places because God has given us a perfect word that can truly furnish us unto all good works. It can truly furnish us to take those positions, the higher positions in heavenly places. So that's really what's stopping the rapture from taking place. I believe that after 2,000 years, if there were, say, 10 million, and I don't know the number, but if you say there were 10 million angels that rebelled, I think, and this is my personal opinion, I think Christ already has the number. I think he's already got 10 million saved. If there's 10 million um, angels to replace, I think there are 10 million saved people already in the last 2,000 years for the body of Christ. I think what's lacking is people that have enough sound doctrine built up in their inner man to take the thrones, principalities, powers, dominions, and mights. And that's what's keeping the rapture from taking place. And that's why I do these videos. Because the more sound doctrine that is out there, the more truly furnished others can be, the body of Christ can be unto all good works, so that the rapture can take place so that the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. So that's when the rapture will take place. Now when will Christ come back, the second coming, when it comes to Israel's program? That's an easy question to answer. It's when all Israel shall be saved. Romans 11, 25 and 26 says that when the fullness of the Gentiles be come in, and then it says, and so all Israel shall be saved. So once Israel is saved, then you can, uh, so once the fullness of the Gentiles be come in, then you can have Israel being saved through the tribulation period. You have 144,000 Jews who are sealed halfway through the tribulation period. Then there are more Jews who are saved um, in the last half of the tribulation period. And so that seven-year period, God has already identified as being what God needs in order to fill the church, uh, not to fill the um, earthly places with the bride of Christ in order to rule and reign on the earth for all eternity. So, uh, so when will Jesus Christ come back again? 
the rapture takes place for the body of Christ once the fullness of the Gentiles be come in, which has to do with enough people qualified for the higher positions. Once those are qualified, we're raptured up. Uh, the judgment seat of Christ is given. And he says, okay, now that we know who's going to take what positions, now, halfway through the tribulation period, Michael and his angels fight against the devil and his angels and kick the devil and his angels out of those positions. And then the body of Christ fills those, fills those positions. And then we wait for the tribulation period to be over, in which all Israel is saved. And then there's a judgment for them, and they take their positions in earthly places. And Jesus Christ comes back at the end of that tribulation period. God has already identified a seven-year tribulation period to be the concluding part for Israel's program. For the church, the body of Christ, we're not in a time period, or we're not revealed what time it is. So we just, all we know is when the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. That is when the rapture will take place. Okay, our next question. Uh, what else must happen before Christ returns? See, again, they don't understand. Most Christians don't understand there are actually two comings. So we pretty much answered that question. What must happen before Christ returns for the, for the body of Christ? It's fullness of the Gentiles be come in. For Israel's program, there are all kinds of events that happen in that seven-year tribulation period. Basically, what happens is once the rapture of the church takes place, then we're back on the time schedule given in Daniel 9, 24 through 27. Now, in that schedule, there are 70 weeks of years. That's 490 years. Verse 26 says that after, well, first we're told that it's broken up into three periods. There's a seven-week period, a 62-week period, and a one-week period. Seven plus 62 plus one equals 70 weeks. And then in verse 26, it says, after the 62 weeks shall Messiah be cut off. So what that tells us is since there are three periods, 7 plus 62 plus 1, and it's after the 62 and the set that Messiah is cut off, and the 7 comes before the 62, and we know that Messiah being cut off is a reference to his crucifixion. Isaiah 50, I think it's Isaiah 53, verse 9, I want to say, tells you that he is cut off from the land of the living. Earlier in that chapter, it says he was bruised for our iniquities, he was wounded for our transgressions. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with the stripes we are healed. And then, a few verses later, it says he was cut off from the land of the living. So, uh, the Messiah being cut off is a reference to his crucifixion. So, since he has already been crucified, then, and that happens after the 69th week, then we know that 69 weeks have already passed, leaving one week. Verse 27, Daniel 9, 27 tells us that the Antichrist confirms the covenant with Israel for one week. So the, the 70th week or the, of Daniel, which ends up being the seven-year tribulation period, that starts at the point where the Antichrist makes a covenant with Israel, seven-year covenant with Israel. Verse 26, Daniel 9, 26, tells you of the events that take place between the 69th and 70th week. The first event being that the Messiah be cut off. And then it says, The people of the prince shall come and destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood. Now, so what that tells you is that God already put a gap between the 69th and 70th weeks. And the reason that he did that is because of the mystery program, that he would reconcile the heavenly places back to himself. Israel would be in unbelief after the crucifixion of the Messiah. They were not ready to be a kingdom of priests to reach the Gentiles. And so at the stoning of Stephen in Acts chapter 7, you had the final rejection by Israel of the Godhead. And so God puts aside, puts on hold Israel's program and he begins a new program, the Mystery Dispensation, in Acts chapter 9 with Paul. It gives a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto Paul, according to Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 9, uh, verse 16 or 17, I think it is. 
So a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto Paul. So they, in the meantime, between the 69th and 70th week is the mystery program that we are currently in. Once that is done, then Israel's program, once the rapture takes place, then Israel's program resumes. And we already know that uh, the Messiah has already been cut off. So then what is remaining then is the people of the prince come uh, and destroy the city and the sanctuary and the end thereof be with the flood. And then the Antichrist confirms the covenant with Israel for seven weeks. Uh, I'm sorry, one week for seven years. So the uh, Israel's program resumes right there in that gap. And there are those events that have to take place. So it doesn't mean when the rapture takes place that Christ will come back seven years afterward. It's going to be longer than that. You've got the... You've got first the... Um, I love it how people don't pay any attention to the sirens. Uh, <laughs> your light's green, go. Um, so first you've got, once the rapture takes place, then we go back to Daniel 9, 26, and there are all these wars that have to happen, and resulting in, and the end thereof is with a flood, I guess in Jerusalem, that's the holy city, and then, the Antichrist, evidently, after the city and the sanctuary is destroyed, he then rebuilds the temple because he resumes the daily sacrifice there uh, for the seven-year tribulation period. So, he, so the Jerusalem and the temple there are destroyed. There's the whole thing is destroyed with a flood. Then the Antichrist starts a rebuilding program he builds that sanctuary or the temple again in Jerusalem. And then he says, okay, we're going to follow God. And he goes back to the Mosaic law there. And he starts that with the seven, uh, with, and he confirms a covenant with Israel for seven years. That's the tribulation period. And a lot of those events, you can read about the seven seal judgments, the seven vial judgments, and the seven trumpet judgments. Actually, seven seals, then the seven trumpets, then the seven vials. You can see those in the book of Revelation. There are things that happen, you know, the two witnesses come, the Antichrist is killed halfway through. Uh, he kills the two witnesses as he's resurrected by Satan as a beast. Uh, he sits in the temple, declares himself to be God, the false prophet is risen. There's the, um, the image to the beast that the people of the earth make. They, uh, he sets it up in the temple, uh, abandons the Jewish law, causes all people to... Um, bow down to the image or take the mark and be killed or be killed. He controls the entire world for the last three and a half years. Uh, on and on and on. There's all these different events. So all that has to happen. And then once the tribulation period is over, then there's a period of darkness for about 45 days, I believe. Uh, that comes from the last few verses of Daniel 12, uh, where it mentions 1,290 days and 1,335 days. You subtract and get the difference, and there's 45 days. So 45 days, they sit in darkness, waiting for uh, the second coming, and then Jesus comes as a thief in the night. He's in darkness. I mean, the world's in darkness, so he comes as a thief in the night. And he steals away Satan's people, that's the two be in the field, one should be taking the other left. He steals away Satan's people. Uh, they come for the battle, the Antichrist and his forces. They lose that battle against Jesus Christ as his feet are on the Mount of Olives. So he's over there on the Mount of Olives doing that battle. Satan and his forces lose that battle. And then uh, Isaiah says, He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs in his arms. Um, get the lambs in his arms um, uh, he, he carries them in his bosom he gently lead those that are with young that's the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leadeth me beside the still water so after the uh, battle against the Antichrist and his forces is over then the Lord Jesus Christ gathers up believing Israel brings them into the kingdom on, in Jerusalem there on earth and he start, the millennial reign begins. They receive the atonement. They're given their positions as kings and priests to rule over the Gentiles. Um, 
So, those are all the things that happen that have to happen before Jesus Christ comes back. For us in the dispensation of grace, it's real easy. Well, I'm not real easy. They're just we're not told what all has to happen, except to know the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. That's when the rapture takes place. And then for Israel, you've got all these events, prophetic events, the Daniel 9:26, the seven years of tribulation, 45 days of darkness, the battle against the Antichrist and his forces, and all the details that are mentioned in the book of Revelation, and also in the book of Daniel, although the details in Daniel primarily have to do with the gap period in Daniel 9:26, and not with the seven years of tribulation. So those, those things in Daniel happen first. Uh, and so when all that happens, I mean, the, the last seven years is mentioned too, but you don't have that, uh, but Book of Revelation is dealing with those seven years, and Daniel deals with events before that. And that's why people get confused. There's a lot of detail. It's hard to understand in Daniel. But anyway, uh, so that's all that has to happen before Christ returns. All right, thanks for watching.